I'm a renaissance, I'm a renaissance, I'm a renaissance man, I'm a renaissance, I'm a renaissance, I'm a renaissance man. Yeah, we bring in the revival. Dark ages always end. Dark ages always end. Going back to the tribal. It's the only way we're breaking out this pen. We're breaking out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 15 of Revival Radio. 15. My name is Rich Steve. My name is the Brain So. We are Critical Mass, aka C Mass, up in that ass like a piece of shit, man. Whoop. What the fuck's going on, Brain So? How you doing, man? I'm chilling, man. I've been playing a lot of Battlefield this week. Ooh. Battlefield One. Okay. Okay. Got the Pendy, rocking the Pendy today. I'm rocking the uh, the Midnight Record shit, you know. So uh, got the Chess Cruiser. You know what I'm saying? Moldavite. What What are you drinking? On? Same thing as last week, if I. Yeah, same thing as last week, man. I didn't have a chance okay. to get anything new. No Lagunitas. nectar of the gods, but uh, anyway. So why don't we, we got get... the nectar of the gods? <laughs> Fucking right, you gave that. That was a ten. 10, 10, 10. 10, ten out but, of 12, uh, people. Let's uh, let's go right into it with uh, this week's Pro of the Week. Who we got, bro? We got Zachary Clegg. This dude is, uh, is you see him behind us right now, rocking his CMAS shirt, see him with me up at the show. He's a fan, and he's a really fucking good fan at that. He's been to, like, Fuck the yeah. last three shows, fucking copped, like, two of the last three albums, because we didn't have the first one with us, but, uh... He fucking, he wiles out, man, every time. That's fucking dope. Yeah, dude. So, uh, much love to you, homie. We really appreciate you coming out and, uh, all the support that you continue to give us. And you guys are fucking bombing your shirts. Sure. Speaking of shirts, did you Salute. also, just to see, uh, my little homie Owen over here. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, my boy Brian Hardy's son who's rocking his new CMAS shirt. I actually took a picture of my kid today in a CMAS shirt. <laughs> Throw that bitch up. We still got a bunch left, man. If you want some, hit us up. 15 bucks. We can do it online. We can do it in person. Whatever you want to do. Hit us up. 15 bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. So, uh, all right. I want to talk about something real quick. Are we going to talk about this? I, I, we are going to talk about that because this leads into that. Okay, okay. Let's talk real quick about how fucking two days after we recorded, yeah. we recorded our episode last week about fracking, there was that giant oil spill or 55, gasoline. 55,000 gallons of gasoline. Leaked into the Susquehanna River. Headed downstream towards Lancaster as we speak. Probably has already hit. I wouldn't That's even gonna know. That's going to fuck shit up. That's fucking crazy. So, which brings me to what we were going to talk about. A new little segment What we want to do is, you know, this week in conspiracy. This week in what we're talking about that has applied in the media. And you got something for us. Okay, some news, man. A filmmaker, <clears throat> Daya Squalsberg. Something like that. You saw the video last week in mm-hmm. uh, episode 14 with the, uh, she was arrested at a pipeline protest. The one and, where the uh, dogs were getting released and the uh, the gas and all that stuff, the mace. North North Dakota? Yeah, I believe so. Um, and she's facing up to 45 years <sighs> and three felony charges in prison. Um, number one, conspiracy to theft of property. <clears throat> Number two, conspiracy to theft of services. What does that mean? I don't even know. Number three, and conspiracy to tampering with or damaging a public service. So I guess they're they're trying to say, like, there's a public service, this pipeline. (laughs) Even though you have the people who, that's their land, saying, we don't want this. Mm Mm-hmm. It's fucked up, man. That- so that's fucking crazy, dude. 45 years for being a journalist. Like, journalism's dead, man. This like, is... Like, if you actually are a real journalist, you're gonna fucking... They're gonna lock your ass up. That uh, that video, I believe, the one that you were showing, too, was from Democracy Now! Yeah, Which yeah. is really, really good. I recommend them highly. Uh, they're pretty good. Yeah, their, their podcast or their video series, I listen to it. Pretty much, like, every other week, I'd say. Like, I'll sit down one or two days and listen to it. Actually, you know what I found today in my research? A uh, We Are Change Pennsylvania. Really? Mm. So check that out. I think it's wearechange.org. I think that that sounds about right. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are we going to talk about this week, Brain Cell? 
First, we're going to talk about the Bilderberg Group. Okay. Um, which is like a secret meeting, secret meeting that's been been held since uh, the 1950s, once a year, of the most powerful people in the world. Mm. I wonder what they are talking about. You we'll know, get into that in a little bit. What are you going to break down? And it's funny that you say influential people meeting in secret because I'm talking about Bohemian Grove. Also influential people, powerful people meeting, meeting up, in secret. Meeting in secret, discussing, you know, possible things going on, some New World Order stuff, or not. Well, we'll get into that, though. So, uh, I guess we will see you on the other side. We're going to show you a little video clip right now of, uh... Us and our boy Zach from the last show with him singing his heart out up on that shit. A little bit of live shit. So we'll be right back. Revival Radio. And welcome back, everybody, to Revival Radio. Make sure you subscribe below. Rich Steve, Brain Cell. So uh, we're coming in. We're talking about the Bilderberg Group. Take it from here, Brain Cell. All right. I'm just going to read the introduction from this book, which I got sent in to me when I was in jail. What's the uh, book called? Who's it by? It's called The True Story of the Bilderberg Group by Daniel Estulin. Okay. Over 1.5 million copies sold worldwide. Very nice. Very nice. This book came out in 2005. Mm. Okay, so. Story time. In 1954, the most powerful men in the world met for the first time under the auspices of the Dutch Royal Crown and the Rockefeller family at the luxurious Hotel Bilderberg mm. in the small Dutch town of Oosterbeek. Oosterbeek. For an entire weekend, they debated the future of the world. When it was over, they decided to meet once a year, once every year to exchange ideas and analyze international affairs, right? Okay. They named themselves the Bilderberg Group after the, the hotel. Um, since then, they have gathered yearly in luxur- luxurious hotels somewhere in the world to try and uh, decide the future of humanity. All over the world. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, among the select members of this club are Bill Clinton, Paul Wolfowitz, Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller, Zbigniew Brzezinski, Tony Blair... And many other heads of government, businessmen, politicians, bankers, and journalists from all over the world. Remember those names because some of them have some crossover into Bohemian Grove for later on. So, uh, in more than 50 years of their meetings, the press has never been allowed to attend. No statements have ever been released on the attendees' conclusions. Nor has any agenda for the Bilderberg meeting been made public. Leaders of the Bilderberg Group argue that this this discretion is necessary to allow participants in the debates to speak freely without being on the record or reported publicly. Yeah, okay. Um, no doubt this discretion allows the Bilder group, Bilderberg Group to deliberate more freely. But that does not respond to the fundamental question, what do the world's most powerful people talk about in these meetings? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be my question. You know, that still is my question about both of these things. And, like, why is the the G8 meetings and shit so widely, like, discussed? Exactly. And this shit isn't. (laughs) This blackout exists despite the fact they are annually, or maybe because they are annually attended by presidents of the International Monetary Fund, Mm. the IMF, Federal Reserve, the World Bank, Federal Reserve, and like a hundred of the most powerful corporations on the planet. CEOs coming in. Chrysler, Coca-Cola, British Petroleum, Chase Manhattan Bank. American Express, Goldman Sachs, Microsoft. Why? Why would all of these heads of state and all of these business leaders possibly need to get together in secret every year? Hmm. Hmm. Are they controlling the world like puppets? Are they the puppet masters? Ooh. Unfortunately, it seems that the Bilderberg Group has grown beyond its idealistic beginnings to become a shadow world government. 
which decides in total secrecy at annual meetings how their plans are to be carried out. They threaten to take away our right to direct our own destinies, and this is becoming easier because of the development of new technologies and, like, the internet, smartphones, um, new methods of behavior and behavioral engineering. And uh, this brings me to, like, uh, how the... They can't really be held secret that much anymore. Like, right. I mean, since like 2012, at <clears throat> least, we have like Alex Jones and mm-hmm. like people like alternative media out there. Posting up David places. Icke, people like and that. Taking pictures of them and like letting As us they're know coming he's in. there. I've even so. seen like in recent years, like itineraries that have leaked with like what topics of the day and stuff were talked about, like talking about like South China Sea, like stuff like that, like international. There's a lot of that things. kind of shit in this book, man. This is just like all <clears throat> documents and names and shit. Yeah. I didn't want to get into it here. Like it's kind of boring, but it's like you actually want to like it's crazy research man. this shit. This book is fucking banging. Look at all those. It's pictures, got pictures man. of all like Henry Kissinger and like Rockefeller. Yeah. Documents, man. Mm. So, uh, tell me, what else you got here? The Bilderberg Group is responsible for creating the European Union. Okay. And the Euro. Okay. Um, members are pushing for personal internet identification. That shit's fucked up, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, like, they really want to end free internet, man. They want to make it so that... They're going to end free speech with that. Everything shit. that you, you post, you say, there's no more anonymous, man. All that'll be left is propaganda. Exactly. Um, what are we we'll living in, North Korea or something? We'll be gone. Um, we'll be able to do this. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we'll be shut down hella quick. Long gone. Hello. They have a co-founder of Facebook, Chris Hughes. Really? Um, Did not know that. The founder of PayPal, Peter Thiel. Executive chairman of Google, Eric Schmidt. The founder of Amazon. The co-founder of LinkedIn. Wow. Uh, Chief research and strategy officer of Microsoft Corporation. Craig J. Mundy and many others, man. Like, that's just the internet people. So you can see the overlaps there. Yeah. You know, the networking that is going on there, the planning and implementation through these networkings that can go on. So to wrap it all up, um, if you're really doing things that are like for the good of humanity, right? then why do you have to keep it secret, man? What did you say? You know, you only, only keep things secret that are evil. Right, right. That's what I was going to say. You said that, man. That's Which reminds me of a JFK quote. That goes like this. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. Just marinate on that for a second. Repugnant means unacceptable. JFK was very, very outspoken about secret societies and stuff like that. That's why they offed his ass. Yeah. So that's, that's crazy, dude. Like, I remember hearing about the Bilderberg Group, like... Very, very soon into when I dove yeah, in. Yeah, right after you, like, heard about Alex Jones, basically. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I really that. wish that we didn't have to mention Alex Jones as much as we do in this episode, mm-hmm. but he really did kind of open up that gate for me, and I know probably it's for fucking you, too. fly. I know it was going to bother man. me. I know, man. Shit. But, uh... So I think you it's, said you got some... Might as well call that thing Alex Jones, man. <laughs> Fucking annoying and flying Alex around. Alex Jones the fly, man. Yeah, dude. But uh, what, you, you want to show some footage of them arriving, all the people running up She'll on She'll fly, them. get away from me. Something like that. Yeah, dude. All right, we'll be right back. Revival Radio. Cool. Henry! Welcome to Dresden, war Why criminal. Why kill now? Arrest him. Why kill Monster! Criminal! War Animal. criminal! Animal! Welcome to Dresden, Henry Kissinger. Sorry, I'll get your <laughs> Criminal! Animal! And welcome back to Revival Radio. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, Pew! share, comment, all that bullshit. Show some love to your boys, man. I'm Brain Cell. Rich Steve. So, uh... 
We're going to talk about Bohemian Grove, man. What is that shit? Where is it located? All right, Bohemian Grove is officially known as the Bohemian Club. It's in Monte Rio, California. It's uh, about 2,700 acres of property in Northern California, a little bit past San Francisco and the Redwood Forest. Shit is fucking huge. Mm-hmm. 2,700 acres, yeah. man. That's, that's, this isn't small. Bunch of rich um, people uh, properties. Getting, getting naked. In uh, 1878 <laughs> is when it was actually founded. Uh, the idea when it was founded was for artists, uh, painters, um, poets, writers, authors, all these different people could have their own little boys club up in the Northern California. So that's woods. why they call it Bohemian. Exactly, man. That's right on the nose, man. So the big thing that goes on there is every July they have the... Uh, <clears throat> Like the midsummer gathering, and this right. is where you have those same kind of affluent people that were going to Bilderberg Group filing in, and they come in. The elite, exactly. Bill Clinton has been seen there before. Mostly, it's Republicans. <laughs> Mostly, it is like old Republicans. You know, you have uh, Dick Cheney, the Bushes, Nixon, Reagan. Uh, David Rockefeller, uh, Henry Kissinger, you know, all these types of people. Then you also do have uh, Bill Clinton, like I said. He's been there before. He's uh, a Democrat, right? He's a Democrat. Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, he's do, a Democrat. Do you think the Democrats have their own Bohemian Grove that no one knows about? They probably do. <laughs> Did you know there's actually a, a woman's Bohemian Grove, too? Oh. That's, like, more recent. I don't have as much information on that, but if you look it up there, there is that... Um, so anyway, every year in July, about 2,000 of these people all get together onto this campground and basically they get fucking schmammered drunk from the minute that they get there until they leave. But while they're there, there's some really fucking weird shit going on. You know, this, and shit. exactly. You know, there's there's a Eyes lot wide of shut, there's shut. a lot of alleged. You know, there's allegedly. I'm not saying it's true. A child prostitution ring that goes on, you know, underground because the way that they have it set up is during the day. Now there are allowed to be women there. In 1984, there was a Supreme Court case that said, you know. It's bullshit. It's sexism. You can't not have women working at this place. So they have since allowed it. But at 9 o'clock at night, the women have to leave. And that's when it turns into some wild shit. So it's like a resort or something? Exactly. They actually have weddings and stuff there during the off season. When it's not the middle of July, there there are ways that you can have your wedding there. Um, The way that it works is these people that want to be members... They have two ways they can get in. They can either go through an artist membership where they apply to be in. They have to go in front of a council who says, like, yes, you really are an artist. So you're saying, like, we can apply to, like... We we have to be invited by somebody who will sponsor us. Like, a, like a, okay. what's it called? Like a country club type thing. Then you have about 10 years that you're going to be in there being observed, just coming to the ceremony every year. Like a prospect. Exactly. And then you're voted on to get in. Or businessmen can just apply, but it's like like a 25-year wait or some shit like that, the wait Holy list shit. is. It's crazy. So, um, anyway, like I was saying, it started out with so artists. you got to be somebody. You, know? you have to be somebody. Yeah. You, uh, it started out with artists, but over time, more and more businessmen, politicians, all started kind of getting in there. Now they have it so that 10% of membership is reserved for artists. But the rest is all just, like, the top of the top. So the way that it's divided when they get there is 120 different camps. You know, there's uh, some of the camp names. Let's see where I got that. Is uh, the Hillbilly Camp. That's for uh, Texas oil tycoons. The Bush family camp is in the Hillbilly Camp. (laughs) The, uh, The Mandalay Camp is where the bankers, most prominent bankers, go. Uh, the Midway camp is the military camp, uh, Dick Cheney, that's where he goes. Uh, and the Stowaway camp is actually David Rockefeller's private camp. He has his own private camp. Uh, of course he does, dude. The way that it's set up for them inside of this camp, then they just have these very, uh, very small 10 by 10 bunks inside these log cabins where they don't even get to choose their own roommate. 
because they're supposed to be fostering relationships with new people in their industry. So they're in these like 10 by 10 rooms. There was this interview I listened to with a guy who was on the wait staff there. And he said it blew him away how small this was. Everybody has a roommate except for one person. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. <laughs> Rockefeller brings his own little manservant with him yeah. who stays with him. And this guy said, you know, I, I don't want to sound weird, but he was he was young and he was handsome. That's what I'm going to say <laughs> about him. So uh, Put two and two together. Exactly, folks. exactly. Um, but people have been, have been trying to infiltrate and investigate this for the longest time. Yeah. You know, I found out about it, like you said, through Alex Jones. That's the most famous case is in 2000. He snuck in with a hidden camera, caught the whole cremation of care ceremony. Or was he let in? Ooh, was a good question. And uh, in 1989, Philip Weiss went there. Uh, he was from Spy Magazine. He infiltrated. Oh, shit. He stayed there for about two weeks, actually, for the entire time. He was actually invited like to in come the, in. In the woods? Or like- in the woods. Like, he stayed in, like, a cabin and shit and, like, wrote this big expose that's where we found out that they were allowed to pee and shit wherever they want. Like, it's one of the rules. Like, not really a rule. Sounds like a bunch of sweaty savages. It's know. weird, man. It's weird. So, uh, party. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know. Like, you just think about this. They say they get drunk from the minute they get there. So it's a bunch of old, drunk, white guys. The only, like, black people there are, like, Colin Powell. And he's just, like, a guest. You know, no girls alleged prostitution rings this this is just some good old boy shit in the middle of the woods until you hear about the cremation of care ceremony okay and that you know that's that? that's what i'm gonna want to talk about on the other side when we come right back fair enough finish it up with that revival radio we'll be right back sure and we'll go play by play through some of the more occultic statements like, we shall read the sign in your burned effigy, the bound body. That's exactly what the Druids actually did. They would roast cats, uh, goats, oxen, horses, and watch the pain of how they died. And from this, extract some type of mystical energy force or power and also be able to tell the future. Our Bohemia, we beseech the Francis by Council. Upon further research of the ritual you just witnessed, it becomes clear. It is a mixture of the Babylonian Canaanite cult of Moloch fused with ancient Druidic rites where you have the female side of Satan, which they first call out to in the she, and then towards the horn god with the he, mixed with Masonic rites from Scotland. It's very likely that many of the 1,500 to 2,000... And welcome back to the show, everybody. We were... You were just about to break down what the... Uh, what was it? The, the cremation s- of care okay. ceremony. Now, this is the highlight of the entire weekend. This is the thing that when you hear about Bohemian Grove, this is what most people think of. This is Alex Jones's bread and butter piece. Well, he, of course, he would have bread and butter. But that's <laughs> Alex Jones's bread and butter from his his expose is the cremation of care ceremony. In uh, 1881 was the first time that it was conducted, but it wasn't until 1929 that it became you know like a yearly thing that they were going to do. The original so like hundred years later, exactly, pretty much, yeah. They no 1881 to 1929, so not oh, even okay, that much. Okay. But uh, forty years. They they have this big production that goes on where they have a giant forty foot. I always thought it was stone, but it's actually hollow. Yeah. Uh, owl, which is you know, there's some debate about this. I always thought it was the god Moloch. That's what I was. I was always led to believe there was another thing that I I was reading. I don't remember what it was, but these people like worship symbols, though. You know, exactly. Like Freemasons and exactly. Stuff. Um. So what they do is they have this big production where there's a hero who sacrifices this spirit named Care to this to this owl. It's like a more mock, symbology. Exactly, like a mock human sacrifice. 
the idea is that care is all of your worries and all of that that are being burned and released into the ether. Originally, it was the first weekend, like the very beginning they would do it, so that they could have uh, exercise demons to ensure success for the two-week period. But since what then... What the time of the year do they do this? Mid-July. Okay. So since then, though, it's flip-flopped. Now it's at the end, like the very, very end ceremony is this big worshipping now, what they do, besides having this mock, like, effigy that is being burned, is they're all wearing robes, yeah. and there's pyrotechnic shows. There uh, There used to be, like, a speaker in the owl with Walter Cronkite as the owl's voice and shit. Like, Please, it's dude. It's pretty fucking crazy. So, this is where it gets weird. Because it's like, why are all of these... This is where these, it gets weird? Uh, to me, this is where it gets weird. Like, before, it's just like, oh, a bunch of old rich guys. Boys will be boys. Ha ha. But now it's just like, yeah, I don't know. What are you doing there? So that's that's your call. You can see in the video that Alex Jones released, you know, the chanting and the clapping. And this is the big moment. So, uh... I don't know, but... It could be that they just invited him there to put on this production. It could which be. Which is not even the real thing. The one quote No that, one knows what's going the on. The one there. quote that I, that I read was from a, like, a, like a press release or something from the Bohemian Grove about this whole thing. And they said, I can assure you that that footage is real, but the story isn't. That's what okay. they said. So... What Fair the fuck enough. is the story then? But still, it means it's real. Um, so there are a couple things that did 100% for sure happen at Bohemian Grove that are pretty big events. Um, the first one would be back in the 1940s, Oppenheimer was actually invited in. The guy who invented the nuke? Exactly. He was not a member, but he was an invited guest. Um, what they do is during... Were you saying like the Manhattan Project? That's, that's what I was going to get to. Oh, um, okay. In the afternoon, around 12.30 every day, they have these schedules that have been released since then. They bring in an outside person who just gives like these big lectures. You know, one was on uh, the war in Iraq, like two years before it was declared. This one was on the Manhattan Project. This is where right. Oppenheimer came in. And the, the plan for the bomb to be developed was made at Bohemian Grove. Another one... Of course it was. Another one would be 1967. Uh, Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan were seen photographed together right before the elections that year. They were rivals. Like, who was going to be the Republican nominee wound up being Nixon. Nixon wound up saying eventually that his most, like impressive and memorable speech of his entire presidency and the one that laid the groundwork for him to get to the White House was done at Bohemian Grove in 1967. And then, guess what? A couple years later, boom, Ronald Reagan's in, in power. And um, you know, like, he's not a good person. No. At all. And he's he, one of the sick ones. The what way do you that, think they do there? The way that he described it, and this is on tape from the Watergate tapes, was Nixon saying, uh, Talking about Bohemian Grove, he says, it is the most faggy goddamn thing you can imagine. <laughs> Were his words on how he described what went um what went down there. But there's also wow. like these yearly yearbooks that they come out with. Like, I think there's been like five or six versions of them over the years where there's just pictures that are released. You see all these pictures that come out. Where, like, there's guys dressed in drag, like Henry Kissinger in drag and shit. Like, it's really, it's weird, man. It's some so, weird shit. Would you consider Bohemian Grove a secret society? <laughs> uh, definitely. That is the definition of a secret society. Um, okay. I don't know, man. Like, I used to be all in on Bohemian Grove. I used to think that that was some straight up, like, devil worshipping, like, probably some real sacrifices going down type stuff. Now I'm not so sure if that's what it's going on, but there's definitely symbolism going on. The thing is, you don't have to believe in magic. I heard this on a podcast. You don't have to believe in magic. But they do. But they do. And that's the thing that matters now. That's what matters. We might laugh it off and say it's stupid, but it means something to them. This still is 2,000 of the most affluent and influential people in the world, getting together for two weeks a year, pissing in the woods, running around naked, jerking each other off, 
but then worshiping an owl and talking about, you know, making the most dominant force in the world a fucking nuclear bomb and shit like that. You know, just the regular shit. Exactly. Just a Tuesday for these kind of people. It's some fucked up shit, but uh, we wanted to do this episode as a primer because next week is the uh, the 2016 elections, man. They're coming up. If you want to call it an election. Yeah. So what we're going to do for you next episode is we're going to break that down, some of the different conspiracies, and why it doesn't really matter anyway in the end, man. So, and why we're all fucked either way. Exactly. So we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe, comment, like, share, all that good shit. The CMAS page, by the way, reached over 900. We, we asked you to help us get there. We did it. Now let's get it to 1,000. I know we can do it. Let's break the 1K mark. Anyway, and the Revival Radio page, too. Don't forget boom, about that one. That's over 400 now. Let's keep it going up. So anyway, my name is Rich Steve. This be the one they call Brain Cell. We'll see you next week. Revival Radio. We out. Peace. I see no hope. No hope when I'm in trouble. I see no hope. No hope for me in struggle. No hope to continue. No hope for me to stay. No hope for me to ride this out is not just a phase I don't really know where we're going, all I know is this There's no hope for our future, no hope for our kids We're drowning, all chained together like a slave ship wrecked on the rocks and the weather No hope when the lights in the house go out But I can't sit back without a sound I'ma blow the whistle, I'ma sound the horn Even when there's no one around to hear me warn Still I mourn, gonna die and be reborn Sick of the norm, wanna go up to heaven, but I don't believe in the lore. I'm sick in the head, no doubt. Rather be in a coffin than living hand to mouth. No hope for the hopeless, choking when I smoke this. Hanging up this rope around my throat, cause I'm broken. Heart so cold, get close and you're frozen. Close up from the world, but my mind stays open. No coping here today, just numbing the pain. Trying to dumb myself down, I'm running away. Been through mad shit, I don't know how. Can't change, need my freedom and I need it now. Why you never around? the hard times, all I need is someone to be my North Star rhyme, so lost in the matrix, lost in the maze, depression got me in a thousand different ways, I see no hope, no hope when I'm in trouble, I see no hope, no hope for me in struggle, no hope to continue, no hope for me to stay, no hope for me to ride this out, it's not just a phase. I see the sky is falling and I think you all are blind I see the end is near, crystal clear, we're running out of time